Well, uh, first off, I want to thank um, the NCAA committee and, uh, and FAU especially for uh, their hospitality. And uh, obviously all of our fans are very, very excited about, uh, about the team being here at this event. The team uh, is focused and uh, still very, very excited as well about, about the opportunity that's in front of us to, uh, to make that the next step in this tournament. With, uh, with us and, and this particular team, this, is a, this has been a really special team for us. It's a, uh, it's a team that is, uh, is talented across all the, um, all the classes, but uh, especially with our, our seniors making a big impact, um, scoring a lot of our goals and, uh, in the last round against a very, very, very good Penn State team. Allie Bailey getting both goals um, has made it really, really neat for, uh, for these guys in their, in their final season in college. So um, I guess on behalf of all of us with Texas A&M and our players and our staff, um, this is a, uh, a great weekend for uh, Texas A&M soccer, and we're uh, excited to take any questions you guys have. Well, this is, uh, this is our first College Cup as, as participants. Uh, we've hosted three of the College Cups, so um, for me personally, um, it's, a, it's a, a big relief to be here. I've been on the other side um, of the room in, in this event watching as um, our peers or my peers were, uh, were, were going through the same thing. Um, like I said before, this is a team that is, uh, is accustomed to winning. They've won uh, you know, the SEC regular season championship, the SEC tournament championship this year. Uh, they did the same feat last year. We've been in 20 NCAA tournaments in a row. We've been to 13 Sweet 16s or, or later in the, in the event. So we've been knocking on the door for, uh, for quite a while. And um, a big part of, I think a big part of us being able to get through um, to this event this year uh, was the fact that these players set, set a, uh, a lofty goal of being a number one seed going into this season. We wanted to, uh, we knew that there were certain steps that had to be taken. And it's one thing to say you want to, do, to make these steps, but it's another thing to actually go out and, and accomplish it. And that's what these guys did. And the reason for that is because there is a huge home field advantage in playing in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I've heard people say it's a goal or maybe even a goal and a half advantage um, for the team that's playing at home because uh, you talk about climate, you talk about the, the role of the ball. Obviously, when you talk about Texas A&M, you talk about the 12th man and what, what uh, playing in front of the biggest crowds in the country do for us. But also the issues of you don't have to travel, you can sleep in your own bed, you're, the familiarity of everything that goes along with it. And uh, you know, that was a, I think that was a, a, a key for us not getting into the Final Four, into the College Cup in past years. And likewise, it, it surely helped us this year because the game that we played uh, last Saturday night uh, in the quarterfinals in front of the largest of the, of the crowds in the quarterfinals um, was electric. And uh, you know, it played in front of you know, uh, a, a typically rabid Aggie fan base um, and by two teams that were really, were really, really playing at the, at the top of their games. So I think that has us pretty prepared for playing in front of a big crowd on Friday here, here at FAU. Um, you know, we've played, I think we, we were up against the number two toughest schedule in the country this year. So uh, even though we have much respect for all the teams in this, in this field, including, especially including uh, Virginia, you know, we've played against great teams and, uh, and, and they've been very, very successful this season. Well, um, you know, Kelly Minogue is a, uh, is a special soccer player. Um, Phil Stevenson, who's our um, associate head coach, um, says, and I, and I completely agree, that she is one of the best pure soccer players that we've ever seen at Texas A&M. Um, and, uh, and because of that, she becomes a target by a lot of our a lot of our opponents, not necessarily go out and try to hurt her, but she takes a, lo a lot of knocks. And so, um, you know, the impact that she makes on the game with her tactical awareness, with her technical abilities, and with her ability to score um, and set up and unlock other teams' defenses, you know, she, she uh, takes a, a physical toll. So we've, we've tried to protect her throughout the year to get to this point and to put her in a position, as well as her teammates, to be able to you know, play the type of game that we want to play, which is similar to what Virginia wants to play. We want the ball on the ground. We like the game to be an attack-minded uh, game, and she's a, a pure attacking player. No matter where we put her on the field, positionally, she's um, she's ready to do it. Well, this this group was uh, 
you know, soccer recruiting seems to be getting earlier and earlier. You hear about kids recruiting, you know, committing before their freshman year in high school. We weren't quite that early at that time, but we had been had been really looking at kids in this particular class for quite a while, and it it, it kind of all cor- corresponded with they were they were juniors in high school when we hosted the 2009 College Cup. And so a lot of them were in Aggieland during the uh, during that College Cup event, playing with their club teams at the time. So uh, you know, it's, it's kind of neat that you know the the full circle for them is they saw it as a as a participant in a youth event on our campus. And uh, I'm sure the dreaming the dreaming if it hadn't begun then, it, it clearly uh, crystallized as far as what they thought could be done. And those guys have stepped in and have made a big impact on our program ever since their freshman year. At freshman year, we were the number one scoring team in the country, much because of people like Merritt Mathias, who was a senior at the time, but also this freshman class, Shea and, and company, stepping in, scoring a lot of goals. The only, it's a unique thing. I'm just going to get a little insight into it. The only person I knew before was Kelly Minogue, because we went to high school together, and we grew up just knowing each other. So we've known but each other. But they played on different club teams yeah. in Dallas. Kelly played with Dallas Texans, and, yeah, and she played with Defeaters. So, I mean, I committed first. I believe I was the first to commit for our class. And then I remember Kelly texted me, like, a few months later, I was like, hey, how do you feel about me going to A&M with you? And I was like, yes, please, I would absolutely <laughs> love that. And then, well, we have a lot of out-of-state people, too. So, I mean, I didn't really know a whole lot um, of the other players because they were so far away, like California and Missouri and Arizona. I think um, a lot of it had to do with a lot of us were involved in the ODP um, program and the national team program. So a lot of us knew of each other, um, and I think – it was more of when we all came to the school and met G, Phil, and Lori, and uh, you know saw the Twelfth Man and the band, the football games. Everyone kind of just fell in love with it. And then once you hear about a lot of other good players going there, it's kind of just an added bonus. And- uh, we had one player who uh, who transferred who wanted to go and, and basically have an opportunity to play play more. She went and, and helped that team get to uh, get to the College Cup as well. So it was ten players that came in initially. Nine have have stayed have stayed and have have made an amazing impact on us. I think. Um, Thomas could tell us what the the number is right now, but this class this class has won more games than uh, than any other class in Texas A&M history, which is quite a mouthful for all the wins that, that we have. But also, they're a, a class that has uh, a lot of experience again because they came in as freshmen and played immediately. Um, they've had they have a lot of experience in this tournament. I know they've won a lot of games um, in the in the NCAA field, both home and and on the road. We have uh, we have quite a following that are coming in. Those of you who don't know that much about what the Twelfth Man is, you see it sometimes in different places. But uh, the Twelfth Man is is a tradition at Texas A&M that goes back to the 1920s, um, back to the uh, pointy football when uh, there were a lot of injuries and illness on the team, and uh, we were down to 11 players. And the coach in a in a big game neutral site came like this, had had to find another player and looked up into the crowd and pulled down a guy named E. King Gill, who actually was on the basketball team, to come down, put on a uniform, and stand with the coach, um, just in case he needed if someone else got injured or hurt, he needed one more person to go in. So ever since that day in the in the 1920s, the student body stands at Texas A&M games, whether they're soccer games or basketball games or football games, ready to come in in case uh, we need them to come in. And I think you'll see a lot of people uh, in the in the crowd uh, on Friday that are, are are here standing with us and, and ready to come in and, and are completely behind these guys, whether they're former players or whether they're uh, – their their families or just uh, Aggies in general. There'll be a there'll be a lot of people in maroon and white this weekend. So we uh, thank you for all all of you for coming out and and covering it and supporting women's soccer, but uh, especially in uh, in coming out to see this special group. It's a uh, should be a fun day. Um, you know, Morgan, she's just a clean player. She's uh, just like I said, a world class player. And Danny brings um, a lot to the table. She runs at defenses, and we've been able to see that a little bit on film. But I think you know it's going to be a great matchup with Kelly and I in the middle, and then Janae Kuzno, and you'll see M- Mickey Harvey in there as well. You know, I think uh, it's it's going to be a lot of back and forth, and it's going to be about who can get the ball under control. But you know, I just have a really great appreciation for them. You got to respect them, but um, I think we're going to match up toe to toe, and it'll be a really good game. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think. You know, it's really a 
a really cool thing to be awarded individually, but nothing compares to what we've accomplished as a team. Definitely the number one seed was a huge um, goal for us at the beginning of the season. And, you know, to be able to go out the entire, I mean, that's a whole season's worth of um, work. You can't just get a number one seed by getting hot at the end of the season. You know, it was every single game meant something. And so, you know, it was really cool to get that number one seed. And then, you know, I think that there, with this team, it's just something special. We refuse to lose, and we want this really badly. So, uh, you know, there's been a sense of, you know, sacrifice. You know, if you watch some of our games, there's been some incredible blocks on the line. Jordan Day having amazing saves. So, you know, just it's just been a little extra edge this season and to make it to the College Cup and to make history for all the players that have laid that foundation for Texas A&M soccer. It's just been such a really cool experience. Right. You know, I, I think I would credit it to, you know, some of my injuries in college have really kind of halted some of the development. I felt like I was getting, you know, to my peak and then I'd be, you know, stopped with a surgery. So um, it, I think it, for me, it was just understanding that this is my last season and I hopefully I get the opportunity to play after college soccer. But, you know, it's, it's never going to be like this again. So just really soaking in that last season and enjoying what the 12th man has to offer. I mean, it's very rarely that you get to play in front of, like G said, sometimes 5,600 people. And um, so, you know, just really soaking in the opportunity and trying to go out with a bang. You, I mean, you always want to remember your last year as your best year. So since Leek was a com is a converted midfielder forward, she's really tricky for a defender. So she'll run at defenses and um, is able to do all different moves that you wouldn't expect from a defender. So that's her key component is just that um, ability to take on, you know, forwards as a defender. And then um, you have Michaela Paulson, the freshman, who is just lights out. She is as strong as a rock and just nobody gets past her. And it's been really great having her next to me um, as a fellow center back because we just complement each other so well. Um, I trust her to be back there with me and she gets the job done and she's just as solid as a rock and she goes into tackles full force and it's really fun to watch. Um, and then Carly Moeller on the right side, she, <laughs> that flip throw, she doesn't do it too often because it hurts her back, but when she does it, wow, it's really incredible. So. Um, and she's another converted forward. Yeah, and as a defender, she's really good at stepping in and um, cutting forwards off from the ball, and that's like one of her key moves as a defender. And um, Her and Lee both get forward a lot, and they are key co components to our attack. And so um, when they're on the ball, we know that things are going to happen. The environment is completely fair. Um, it's all based on whoever comes in and, and fits the best is the one that we're going to use, whether she's 17 years old or whether she's 22 years old really doesn't it, that doesn't really factor into it. It's about what, what goes in because in addition to those players, you know, um, Grace Wright has been outstanding for us. She's stepped in in every one of our positions on the back line as well as in the midfield. She's an, and she's an Irish international, um, and she's been outstanding as well. So on certain, and as did Ashlyn Harriman when, uh, when uh, um, Michaela was, was injured about two-thirds of the way through the season, missed, uh, missed five weeks. She was out, and Ashley Harriman stepped in, and so there's been a lot of people who have been able to kind of fit into it. It's, it's, and they all bring something a little bit different to the, uh, to the equation, and, and they make us a little bit different when they're in. We're the closest group of girls that we've had, um, as seniors, we made a point to make sure that it wasn't going to be about us. That this wasn't going to be the seniors last year. We have to win it all. No, it was going to be about the team, and that we were going to do this as a team and for the team. And that's kind of been like the key message: is that we are in this together, and um, we're going to do everything that we can to make it happen. And just kudos to the girls because we have been able to make it happen. You know, we've made so much history this year and have accomplished so many things. And it's just really awesome to see how we came together in August and during two days, and we sat down as a group and made a list of goals and now at the end of the season we've literally been able to check off every single one because almost every single almost one. every single one national championships left but it's just been so special to be a part of and just um it's just something that we'll cherish for the rest of our lives is uh, this team and these girls and just the memories that we've made are just so awesome stevenson um one of our um, assistant coaches we've really done some intense goal setting with her and it's not just hey you guys, we just want to win a national championship. It's been game by game. We're going to set out what are our key things that we have to do to win. Um, we've done that before every single game. And then we've kind of broken the 
season up into different seasons. We started with the spring and the summer, and then we worked our way to non-conference, conference, NCAAs, SEC tournament, all that kind of stuff. So we really broke it down on what we're going to need to do to win. And like Megan said, this has been a really cool experience to be with this team just because there's been a lot of games that we've had to use every single person on our team. And like the SEC tournament, there's been people that's hurt. Um, Jordan Day had to step out for quite a few games, and Renee stepped in and did a wonderful job. So it's really been a team, a team effort, and it's you know it's kind of rare to have that many good players. You know, you find 11 good players that can play a game, but that's not going to last you through the whole season. So it's just been really cool to you know have a complete team this year and to be able to be disciplined and set goals and actually reach them. It's one thing to set them, but it's another thing to reach them. I think well, first and foremost, my favorite thing about that group is like you're naming all these people. You don't know who's going to score that game. <laughs> But somebody's going to step up. Um, I think from our junior year, um, G and Phil moved up, me and Kelly back into the midfield. And I think that was a really pivotal moment in for our class and for our future team. Um, me and Kelly were able to be in a position that we could run at defenders and kind of do what we do best. Um, Kelly's a great playmaker. Sometimes she's going to be the leading scorer. Sometimes she's going to be the leading assister. So. And then, you know, you can always find BB out wide. That's you know that's kind of our go-to. She's she's going to get down the line. She's going to beat her defender and she's going to get a cross off. Sometimes she's come up with some incredible goals from the impossible angle. And um, you know then there's Annie up top. I mean that's a handful. <laughs> so I know whenever we're playing small sided games, Megan always jokes. You know she can turn and shoot from anywhere oh, and she so long. It's a nightmare. Will crack a shot. And then Allie Bailey, I mean, she's just such a tricky player. And like if any of you saw on Penn State, she's scrappy. She's going to get to the end line and get the ball in the back of the net, um, whatever effort it takes. Um, she's always there. She's from touchline to touchline. I think she's just a workhorse, and she's really the engine of our team. But, you know, with our offense, you know, always have to mention our defense too. So they do a great job of being able to win us the ball and keep us possession and let us do what we do best. You know, I credit Janae Cousineau for sure in the midfield. We always joke she has to defend for two people because she's defending for me and Kelly. But, you know, she allows us to do what we do and um, still be able to defend kind of for both of us. So, you know, it's just been a really cool thing to watch. A lot of people see our offense, but I think our defense has a lot. We're not a formula. Um, we're not just a, there's a lot of teams that you watch them play and you can tell that they've been scripted in the way that they, they want to go out. And sometimes they're, sometimes they, I think they limit themselves to playing within that script. This is a, this is a free form attacking team where we have a lot of players with different types of, of, um, of skill bait, of skill sets and some things that are, you know, obvious big advantages for us in, uh, in the way that we play. So, you know that ties into a little bit of what Shay said. You can throw Liz Keister into this into the same mix too, as far as someone who can turn a game um, around immediately. And I, I think you'll see from Virginia, um, but also especially from us, is that you know we believe in in playing you know a, a good brand of defense, but uh, you know it's a lot more fun to attack. You know it's it's a lot more fun to score goals and to get goals going, and that gets the crowd going, and that gets people that gets our energy up, and so. If we can, if we can hold on to the ball, our our motto is: if we can hold on to the ball, then you can't score. And if we can hold on to the ball, then we can score. And so, you'll see from both teams who are going to want to try to possess the ball tomorrow, and especially by us, is that if we can put our dangerous people in dangerous positions, then we can turn the game and uh, and make it ours. And we don't have to necessarily have possession of the ball the whole time. We just have to be able to get it into key places at key times.